Sinbad the Sailor, Part 2, in English once there lived a poor porter Sinbad who came across a lovely mansion and envied its master Sinbad the Sailor who was the master of the mansion inquired about his envy and offered him wine and food to eat then Sinbad the Sailor narrated his story, Seven Voyages, of how he became rich to the porter and others at his mansion. Sinbad's first voyage has been very profitable he became a wealthy man he did not lack luxury or entertainment but he missed the taste of the salt air and the thrill of travel and adventure soon he found a newly made ship with the best sail and equipment he booked his place on the ship and the sail was set. After many stops the ship came to a peaceful island with no sign of human inhabitants Sinbad roamed around had lunch and slept pleasantly when he woke Uphe found that his fellow travelers had already left Sinbad decided to explore the island. Suddenly the sky turned dark he thought it was a large storm cloud but then realized that the cloud was a giant birdie ran towards the trees and hide behind them then Sinbad recalled travelers tales of a bird monstrous in size called a roche was so desperate to escape the deserted island that he was willing to try even the maddest of ideas. He crawled out of his hiding place and crept towards the brooding bird Sinbad climbed up onto its giant claw and tied himself to its leg using the cloth from his turban the bird started to fly up in the sky and landed in a deep ravine Sinbad untied himself from the bird's foot and dived behind a rock. He looked around and found that it was the home of enormous serpents each the size of a palm tree he saw that the entire place was filled with huge diamonds just one of those stones could make a man wealthy Sinbad spent that night in a cave in fear the morning he wandered a little way down the valley. While walking down the valley he found a huge piece of meat dropped from the sky and landed on the rocks suddenly he recalled a traveler's tale of a dangerous mountain range where a few myrrh. Chance would drop pieces of meat into a valley hoping that diamonds would stick to them they would wait for an eagle or any other bird to swoop down pick the meat and carry it to its nest then merchants would climb to the nest scare away the bird and recover diamonds. Sinbad filled his pocket with diamonds then taking off his turban he attached the meat to his chest the giant bird came and carried the meat off to its nest with Sinbad. When the bird settled down in the nest there was loud shouting and stones landed in the nest which made the bird fly off men approached and were surprised to see Sinbad Sinbad shared the diamond with the man who helped. All of them safely reached the ship and sailed for Baghdad and they sold the diamonds for a great fortune now Sinbad became twice as wealthy as before the porter was in awe of all that he had heard and was invited to hear another tale the following evening. The Three Billy Goats Gruff Once there were three billy goats gruff lived on the grassy hillside near the river. There was a little billy goat gruff, middle billy goat gruff, and big billy goat gruff. They loved to eat the sweet green grass all day and cool fresh water from the river. The three brothers lived happily on the hillside. NBSP they ate and ate and ate all day soon they realized that they had eaten up every last blade of the grass on the hill where they lived. Oh no! What will we eat now? Cried, little billy goat brother. Don't worry little brother. There's a lush meadow o the other side of the river filled with yummy grass. All we have to do is cross the bridge and enjoy the delicious green grass said middle billy goat brother. But crossing the bridge was dangerous. The three billy goats gruff were afraid as they knew a big awful smell troll with horrible red eyes lived underneath the bridge. He was hairy and had very big pointed teeth. He eats anyone who tried to cross the bridge. He was longing to eat those billy goats gruff and was waiting for the right opportunity. The three billy goats gruff grew hungrier. The big billy goat asked the brothers who will cross the bridge first. Little billy goat gruff said he will cross the bridge first. He trotted down the hillside. Tip tap tip tap tip taps his hoofs made the sound on the wooden bridge. Who is that tip tapping over my bridge? Growl the troll jumped up the bridge. I am little billy goat gruff. I am crossing the river to eat the sweet grass on the other side of the river, said the little billy goat gruff. Oh no, you are not. I am going to gobble you up, roared the troll. The little billy goat gruff was very scared. 
but he was also very smart. He said, Oh, please you can't eat me, I am too small, and you won't be satisfied eating me, I won't make a very good meal, but you can eat my other brother Middle Billy Goat who will come alone, he is bigger and fatter than me. said he will go next and trotted down the hillside. Tip tap tip tap tip tap his hoofs made the sound on the wooden bridge. Who is that tip tapping over my bridge? Growl the troll jumped up the bridge. I am little Billy Good Gruff. I am crossing the river to join my little brother in the meadow. Oh no, you are not, roared the troll again. Because I am going to gobble you up. The middle billy goat gruff was scared, but he was also very smart. He said, Oh, please you can't eat me, I am skinny, you won't be satisfied eating me, wait for a short while you can eat my older brother big billy goat who is much bigger than me, and would make the best meal for you. Oh, very well you may cross the bridge said the greedy troll and again went back under the bridge. The middle billy good gruff also tip-tapped the rest of the bridge into the wide meadow and joined his little brother. On the other side of the river, a big billy good gruff saw that both of his brothers were safe in the lush green meadow. So he trotted down the hillside tip-tap 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 his hoofs made the sound on the wooden bridge. The monstrous troll I am the big billy goat gruff, I am here to eat lush green grass with my brothers on the other side of the river. Oh no, you are not. Growled the troll again because I'm going to eat you up and I am starving. But unlike his younger brothers, big billy goat gruff was not scared of the troll. He was big as well as strong. Angrily the large goat stomped his hooves on the bridge, lowered his big pointed horns, and charged at the troll. He crashed into the ugly smelly troll and he was thrown up into the sky and fell right into the flowing river with a great splash never to be seen again. Then the big billy goat gruff tip tapped the rest of the bridge to the lush meadow and joined little billy goat and little billy goat gruff. The three billy goats gruff spent the rest of the day munching the sweet green yummy grass and drinking cool water from the river. Once upon a time, there lived a lion in the dense Amazon rainforest. While he was sleeping by resting his big head on his paws, a tiny little mouse unexpectedly crossed by and ran across the lion's nose in haste. This woke up the lion and he laid his huge paw angrily on the tiny mouse to kill her. The poor mouse begged the lion to spare her this time and she would pay him back on some other day. Hearing this, the lion was amused and wondered how could such a tiny creature ever help him. But he was in a good mood and in his generosity he finally let the mouse go. A few days later, a hunter set a trap for the lion while the big animal was stalking for prey in the forest. Caught in the toils of a hunter's net, the lion found it difficult to free himself and roared loudly in anger. As the mouse was passing by, she heard the roar and found the lion struggling hard to free himself from the hunter's net. The little creature quickly ran towards the lion's trap that bound him and she gnawed the net with her sharp teeth until the net tore apart. 
Slowly she made a big hole in the net and soon the lion was able to free himself from the hunter's trap. The lion thanked the little mouse for her help and the mouse reminded him that she had finally repaid the lion for sparing her life before. Thereafter, the lion and the mouse became good friends and lived happily in the forest. Moral of the story, love and kindness are never wasted. You can accomplish by kindness, which you cannot by force. The Dove and the Ant Annette was walking back to her home after a day's work. She walked along the bank of the stream. But suddenly, she slipped and fell into the stream. The ant was petrified and tried to look for something to hold on to. She then realized that she was sailing with the stream, away from her home. The ant panicked and started crying out loud, Help! Help! Please help me! The dove was watching all this from a nearby tree. Thinking smartly the dove plucked some leaves from the tree and dropped it into the water near the struggling ant. The ant climbed safely over the leaf and reached the shore safely. The ant was grateful to the dove and thanked him. The dove replied, It is my duty to help someone in need. I am glad I could be of help to you. Then the dove flew into the open sky. A few days later, the ant was walking through the forest. She noticed a hunter with a gun. He was aiming his gun at a pretty bird sitting on a tree. The ant immediately recognized the dove and ran towards the hunter. As the hunter was about to pull the trigger of his gun, the ant climbed up his shoes and bit him on the leg. The hunter shouted in pain and missed his aim. The dove flew away from the tree. The dove was saved just in time. The ant walked away happily as she able to help the dove in return. Moral of the story, one good turn deserves another. Every good deed we do for others will surely come back to us. The Lazy Donkey A salt merchant lived in a small village. Every day, he walked to the city to buy salt. His donkey accompanied him. The merchant loaded the bags of salt on the donkey, and they walked back to the village along the river. But the donkey did not like to carry so many bags on his back as he was lazy. The donkey always looked for ways to get rid of work. One day, the salt merchant loaded the donkey with two bags of salt, and they started walking back to the village. On the way, the donkey accidentally slipped into the river. The salt dissolved in the water and when the donkey was pulled out of the river, he felt lighter. The salt merchant had to go back to the city to buy more salt. The donkey thought of this as a good idea to get rid of the load. The next day, the donkey intentionally slips into the river. When he was pulled out, he felt lighter. The salt merchant understood the donkey trick. He knew that donkey was falling in the river on purpose. So, one day the salt merchant filled the bag with cotton instead of salt. The donkey felt that the bags were much lighter than previous days, but the donkey wished to reduce the weight even more. So the donkey again fell into the river. But when he was pulled out, the load on his back felt much heavier. As the bag contained cotton, when it fell into the water along with the donkey, the cotton observed the water and the bag become heavier. The donkey had to pick up the heavier load. It realized his mistake and understood that the same measures will not suit all circumstances. He had learned his lesson. Moral of the story, you can be fool a person a few times but not always. Those who are too clever sometimes overreach themselves and get trapped at their own risk. Thanks for watching.